I mean, it's a nice camel. Oh, I'm, you know, no doubt. It's a, pr- it's a pretty camel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As camels go, it's pretty fucking hot. Welcome to the George Rockle Schmidt Show. This week we're discussing what a movie of the Bible would be like if the Bible in its entirety was condensed into about 90 minutes. How are you doing, Damien? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. Thank you for asking. S- someone stole my trash can this week. <laughs> Staying on topic, excellent. Tell me more. <laughs> Who who does that? Who steals a trash can? They they waited until it was empty. Thank God. How's your relationship <laughs> with your neighbours? Oh yeah, not very good. Yeah, <laughs> tumultuous. At All best. those tire fires haven't been helping. Or that one bushfire that time. Ooh yeah, topical. Just you know, was it Moses? Was it Moses? Or was it in fact lighter fluid? Who knows? I think that's a, about the breadth of my you know theological uh, knowledge right there. Do you think burning bush was actually just some sort of metaphor for an STD? I think, potentially. I mean, I've never heard of that in any context where I haven't smoked at it. I mean, I've just been, yeah, going through a couple of notes right now, and I still kind of... Um, but who's, who steals a trash can? I don't understand. Someone uh, either very petty or very envious or possibly a raccoon. Very envious? Like, I'm going to have this guy's fucking <laughs> Yeah, trash. what you haven't clarified is your bin is actually gold-plated. It's it, a real yeah. status symbol here. Where you live. The, the thing was, was I, I, I was trying to keep my trash can, my trash can, my garbage bin, whatever. Um, I was trying to keep it clean, and recently uh, it's just been covered in bin juice on the inside. So I'm not that sorry to see it go. But having said that, if I'd have caught the person doing it, I would have chopped their hands off. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I would do. I mean, I, I remember reading about this guy who um, shot somebody in the back because they... They knocked on his door and ran away. I'm all for that. <laughs> knock it all, knock it all, run. That's twelve years dungeon. Particularly um, if it's children. When I said I would, you know, when I said twelve years dungeon, I was being a little, I was messing around there. But what I really believe, my real political beliefs, are that the laws in the laws in this country or whatever, mm-hmm. this country, your country, wherever you are, the laws in your country are spot on, it's absolutely spot on. That is what the law should be. The punishment should be what what are dished out now. However, anyone under 18, if they break any law, no matter how petty, instant death. (laughs) Then when you're 18, then, yeah, then you can get a traffic violation, then you get a ticket. Get a traffic violation and you're 17 and a half, bullet in the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get a traffic violation when you're 12, you get an applause, but it's still a bullet in the head. Do you think that the Bible is fantastic or do you think it's wonderful? Which one? Oh, well... um... Not wishing to make any enemies here, I would say it's a cracking read. I mean, if ever you're bored on a train, the Bible. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep many copies. Um, when's the last time you saw a copy of the Bible? Oh, that's a bloody good point. Uh, you don't I see was... them as much now, do you? I, I get a feeling that a lot of Christians today are using PDFs of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are certain viruses when you go online that, that will... They will infiltrate your phone, tablet, computer, whatever, and just replace all files with the Bible. Yes, yeah, the motel virus. That would be a great way, uh, great way to kind of spread religious propaganda. Usually, it's just well, see like dick pills, you know. It's uh, I, would, I would, I mean, I'm not a particularly religious person myself, but I'd, I'd appreciate seeing something other than that for a, you know, for a change. If it's going to fester inside my computer, there could be a little bit of variety. Well, I I think that PDFs uh, would be great because you can you can look things up. Much quicker, can't you? Yes, and you know. You, you, <laughs> you, well, no, no. My my point is, is that I, I'm. I would have thought that with the advent of of internet technology and and just being able to kind of just being able to have a tablet with a PDF on it that you can search. I, I'm surprised there aren't more people kind of stood at the back of churches saying that's wrong. <laughs> no, that's wrong. No, and they're clergymen as well. You know, they're there with their iPads. I imagine they're knowledgeable. I mean, there are a lot of disagreements between people who are very versed in in the Bible, aren't they? I mean, you know, people can't even fucking decide if if it's literal or not. And yeah, some people use it. It's for some people it's a moral guideline, and for some people it's you know it is yeah, the you, word of God, which is what you know. Well, you're, you're right because obviously I, I've I've often seen footage of of the Pope like banging the Bible and saying, "Look here, it says wear a fucking man dress. Look, that's why I'm doing it," <laughs> and a big pointy hat. Yeah, he, he he's fucking sick of the ridicule as well. So he's you know he's painted his own banner, and it's just hung above that balcony in the Vatican. It's like let me wear yeah, because, a dress. Yeah, because the, the the I mean yeah you know we 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 know the Pope. The Pope is a groovy guy. The Pope's much more of a kind of sports jacket and jeans sort of guy. <laughs> 
So Did you somewhere know that the Pope in this... used to be a bouncer. What? The Pope used to be a bouncer. Is that real? Is that true? Yeah, he used to. Be, yeah, he used to be a bouncer in Buenos Aires. All right. Okay. Before the... he became a before he became a Pope. Now, what kind of club were we talking? What was he bouncing? Where was he bouncing? D- Sorry. <laughs> Where was he bouncing? I don't know. I imagine it was. Uh, I imagine it was a very kind of run of the mill nightclub, uh, you know, no, where obviously you know nothing bad happens. There's no drugs or sex or anything. <laughs> it's just a library. I like. I mean, I like to think that he was bouncing, and his the other bouncer was Dougal from Father Ted. <laughs> so maybe you know, first first pitch with this movie, it's just like. Uh, it's Father Ted, it's Father but it's Ted. just, you know, Dougal's been read, read a bedtime story and it's just the Bible cover to cover. And since we've got this new hip happening Pope, at some point in the proceedings, we've got the Pope on like a water ski, you know, jumping a ramp over a shark because he's that fucking cool. Well, OK, so th- this is this is what I'm thinking. So most Bible adaptions focus on on specific parts of the Bible, you know, uh, the Garden of Eden, the flood, a bit of Moses, uh, birth of Jesus, Jesus Christ, the teenage years. Jesus' death and making magic uh, and the end of days. <laughs> Do you think you could put, like, the entire Bible into 90 minutes? So, like, there's no narrative arc. It's just someone doing an impression of Leonard Nimoy saying, and then this happened, and then this happened. You know, as if the whole Bible had been reduced to a very long sizzle reel. <laughs> so, I mean, so, you, you could know, definitely, like, amalgamate the stories. I mean, you could have scenes where, like, verses uh, that have you been could have long... Jesus on a big boat. <laughs> Yeah. Like, we, like we never know who anyone in particular is. It's mostly just men with beards shouting at each shouting at each other and occasionally being oppressed by men without beards but with strappy sandals. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, like com- I say, like all of it, like completely ham-fistedly amalgamated. So, like stories after um, Christ's crucifixion, when they go to the cave, they move the boulder, they kind of you know check the remains. Like Jesus is there too, going, "Oh my God, what have they done to me?" Oh, Jesus is Lazarus. Or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, my dad. My dad says, "My my dad. This is funny. My dad says, I remember when you would read the Bible and Jesus just died." <laughs> <laughs> my my dad says he when he was a kid they had they had the Bible and Jesus wasn't res- resurrected and this is a new thing. <laughs> Just precisely how old are you, Father? But I, th- I think his point was that that was that was maybe put in the Bible more recently, you know, a, a, you know, a thousand within the years last ago or <laughs> within the last sixty years or so. <laughs> the last sixty years, everyone's just forgotten. Every, I mean, every, everyone's forgotten as well that, like, when people read the Bible in the seventh century, it did have a line in there which said, "Gays and lesbos, absolutely fine, rock on." <laughs> <laughs> Saith the goddeth. Heard of like many dubious verses in the the Bible, but unfortunately, I'm not that knowledgeable as to be able to quote them. Um, there was a there was a really um, rare copy of the Bible, uh, which I think is, is if you have a copy, it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, and it's it's just the King James Bible, but it has a line in it which says, or it has the line, you know, the line, the famous line in it, which but it says, uh, "Thou shall commit adultery." Instead of thou shalt not. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. and the, you know there were there were only so many of these printed uh, before they realised they'd made a mistake. So that's the, uh, all right. So we've got to choose which Bible we're going to make this movie out of. So you know maybe this is it. Yeah. So this is a very kind of sexy movie. So that was yeah. That's a Ten Commandments. So maybe you know we got uh, maybe the first fifteen minutes is just this montage of just Moses absolutely fucking crushing it. I uh, bet you can't name me the Ten Commandments. No, not at all. Not I, I couldn't even try. Okay, so it's it's don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't steal, like your parents, never poo poo a nickel, <laughs> always, never, <laughs> never whistle on Monday. There's only one God, uh, you know. Praise me. Um, but <laughs> that, that, that's seven. Be excellent to one another. Party on, dudes. There's only nine. <laughs> All right, so I think we've just landed on the casting inadvertently. So we've got George Carlin as Moses, right? George Carlin would be a great Moses. And all right, God. So, all right, I've got it. So this is how we get all the events of the Bible into a ninety-minute movie. So Jesus is like a hapless slacker, right? And he's got to achieve all of this in such a small lifetime. Maybe we. I'm going to lean on obviously Bill and Ted here. Say it's a time-traveling phone box, but you know. 
But could, is there anything? I think it should. I think it should be a bit more kind of uh, a bit more Middle Eastern. I think it should be a time traveling camel that people <laughs> sit on. <laughs> so but you can has, still get like all right. You so, can still get like Socrates and Napoleon on the camel, but it's still a bit of a jam. Right. Okay. But you know this camel. You know, they can't weight it up too much because it has to, you know, run at speeds of up to 88 miles an hour, which is not naturally possible by a camel. So maybe we can ha- include a small part where Moses is trying to figure, it, figure this out. He knows the science, but he knows he's kind of limited by what's physically possible. Well, OK, and, and can I just say before I forget, I know I'm interrupting you, but I think that it's important that people realize that how important the camel is when they do a three-way fist bump and they all say together, Bill, Ted, and the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Because no one's, you know, as far as I know, there's not much in terms of a physical representation of the Holy Ghost. So it could be anything. So maybe, you know, we've got this time-traveling camel that can, you know, play that part. I wouldn't say that's how it's represented in the Bible, but we're trying to find something that's not, too sacri- you know, too much sacrilege. So maybe, yeah, maybe this this camel is it. I mean, it's a nice camel. Oh, I'm sure, you know, no it, doubt. It's a pre- it's a pretty camel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As camels go, it's pretty fucking hot. <laughs> it's one of them sexy camels. <laughs> one of them fucking sexy camels. This camel knows what it's doing, flaunting itself like that. And it loves to drink vodka gimlets. Oh, okay. It's also partial partial to a nice Negroni every now and again. A nice King Edwards. <laughs> potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a nice potato. I think there should, there should definitely be a point where they meet God and they say, well, how come the Holy Ghost is a camel? And he's like, well, camels can, can uh, carry a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> but also jet fuel. You didn't think big enough. Camels can... But the thing is, is, is like the battle between Satan, it's going to come down basically to how much... Um, how much fuel our tornadoes and and vertical takeoff harriers have, <laughs> and, 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 this, and this camel can carry a lot of fuel. All right, so you kind of jump to the rapture, right, where like Satan has appeared on Earth, and like on the first fucking wave um, to take, it's like a squadron of a squadron of Spitfires led at the helm by Spitfire, you know, yeah, a battalion of an, like, any like, airplane. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is you know. We'll make it a period yeah. piece as well, you know. There's a load of Messerschmitts as well, yeah. But if we keep it like a period piece, if it, it's going to seem ta- this movie's going to be tacky if it, you know, can occur in the modern day. So revelations we're going to say happen, you know, shortly after the events of World War One. So Spitfires are relevant, you know. I'm not just fucking pulling it out of my ass, but you could right. definitely have well, like they, they weren't around after World War One. Oh, I've well, fuck it. Well, I mean, I've yeah, obviously well, written I myself be, into a corner then, haven't I? I? I think it should be like, yeah, the the the. The angels versus the demons should be all entirely in like very rudimentary like nineteen sixteen biplanes. <laughs> <laughs> like like they haven't even got machine guns on them yet. They're, they're like firing at each other with revolvers from these fucking planes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. My key point is that the hell of this battalion are of course flying camels. Uh, how about this? This is a four hour movie, not a ninety minute movie. So oh not my really god! Sti- yeah, I know. Yeah, you've kind um, of you, you've kind of spoiled it there. Ray Liotta as God. It's all told from heaven as God makes the universe, then deals with the Adam and Eve crisis and so on. Most of the four hours are made up of God's salty debates with some of his angels, chiefly his two highest ranking angels, Ketchup and Mustard, played by John Malkovich and Kathy Burke. (laughs) Rowan Atkinson is Satan, who occasionally makes an appearance on the other end of a conference call. The film ends up being about the bureaucratic system of heaven and how God responds to certain things or doesn't bother. It's never shown but constantly alluded to that he has other projects on the go outside of Earth. Uh, and maybe, um, maybe, they, maybe there could be a shot where God is in his study and he's just surrounded by an enormous train set. <laughs> and so, and someone, someone's like, uh, but God, uh, uh, there's loads of prayers about Ebola. And he's like, no, 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 the, the 9.15 to... Uh, Chattanooga's coming in. I don't give a shit about anything else. <laughs> yeah, like throws his fucking whiskey at the door. He's a bitter drunk. He, this is his I only told you refuge. I my Irish whiskey, you fucking whore. <laughs> this brings out the worst of me. You know this. Yeah, you indulge me anyway. You wanted this to happen. I hate you, but I love you. Yeah, like God's secretary is a very loving woman, but he like beats her down. He's like, you made me do this. Who would play God's secretary? Gillian Anderson. 
<laughs> Do you have like something open right now? You're just picking names at random, or no? I'm just picking, I was going to. I was going to say his secretary. His secretary could be uh, like. A body with two heads, and one's Gillian Anderson, and one's David Duchovny. Oh right, okay. So and David uh, David Duchovny is like really kind of like really horny, but Gillian Anderson is, isn't into it at all. Right, okay. So, so they're, they're constantly fighting about like, are they gonna have sex with something or not? Yeah, no. What happens is they've got control of each. You know, each has a control of one arm, and it's you know it's a it's Gillian Anderson's body. Or you know, um, I'm not saying David he's a Duchovny rapist, but aggressively you know. attached. So every time she's trying to be serious, he's got one hand desperately trying to frig frig itself right and and then like when she gets really pissed off when david Duchovny's a bit of an ass she sits on her balls <laughs> <laughs> all right so oh okay i don't uh do we elaborate uh do we elaborate on what the genitalia is going to be is it like one of each did. or <laughs> one of each well that, that would be that would be god wouldn't it god would have one of each <laughs> God, God is not obvious, you know, is not subject to such uh, torments and temptations because there's only one head on his shoulder. So he he knows what he wants. What do you think God looks like? Ray Liotta is the answer to that. Moving on, um, I've got another idea here. Hit the right demographics by having God in a wheelchair. Oh, <laughs> Old Testament God is bitter because of his disability, but New Testament God is kind of over it a bit. Amelia Clark could be Gabriella or Gabriella, <laughs> the angel who helps God recover until God decides to roll his wheelchair onto some railway tracks. And I just made myself sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think not necessarily like a. What kind? Why is he in a wheelchair? So is it like he's had an accident, or does he have like cerebral palsy or something? And what Ooh. what what this is is just you know my left foot, um, and we've just swapped out Daniel Day Lewis for God. I think, awesome. I, think, I think it was a bit of both. So I think he was making some diseases, you know, just to keep the humans down. And then he fell into a disease he was making. Right. So he's in his, God's in his laboratory and he's, you know, he's tinkering away. He's making right. all this stuff. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously there's come some kind of spill. Um, and then, you know, he, 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 he's now afflicted with, you know, one of his creations. So, all right. So that's, that's the setup, right? He's now afflicted with downs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So anyway, going back to your previous idea. So we've got Mulder and Scully up in heaven. Why is that? Is it the actual Mulder and Scully? or I never said anything about Mulder and Scully. Who, who are Mulder and Scully? I'm thinking of the actors, David Duchovny and... Uh, oh, Julian right. Okay, Anderson. okay. So it's, got, it's just a coincidence that they're, you know, spliced together as God's secretary up in heaven. It's got nothing to do with their link to the X-Files or anything like that. I just think they're good actors. I've never seen the X-Files. <laughs> I don't care for the letter X. <laughs> I find it morally dubious and highly to be, offensive. To be, to be honest, I find I find watching Star Trek is quite difficult because sometimes the K looks a bit like an X to me. <laughs> <laughs> because the K, if you put two more, oh, fucking hell, gets me riled up like you wouldn't believe, Damien. Star Treks. <laughs> Uh, how about this one then? I, you're gonna love this. I just just reading the first sentence uh, makes me smile. <laughs> okay. Selena Gomez is Jesse Jesus in this sparky retelling of the Bible in a modern setting. <laughs> <laughs> the Virgin Mary gives birth in an American border patrol detention center. Jesse grows up to be a pop star, but the Jews don't like it. I think that last bit needs a bit of work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How about Jesse grows up to be the saviour, but she's given the electric chair in a future version of the United States where, blasph where blasphemy laws were snuck in in a tax reform bill. Ooh. <laughs> See, it's topical, but it's also one for the kids. It looks like quite a grim, like a, quite a grim watch. No, because she has some songs in there. You know, she plays some songs. But Selena Gomez is a, is a musician, right? Right, okay. Right, she is. She is. I, I suppose that some people would describe her as such. Okay, but I mean, she's... Okay, that's what... I mean, yeah, I'm not confusing it with anyone, am I? No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, you're really, you really are kind of like painting quite a picture of just how isolated we are, <laughs> you know, from pop culture. It's like, that person, they sing, don't they? <laughs> Have you heard of this new Lady Jar Jar? <laughs> I, I don't uh, quite care for this popular music. And uh, Justin Bieber could be um, John <laughs> it's, the Baptist. It's Bieber. Okay, <laughs> Justin, Justin Houston Houston Bieber could be 
John the Baptist, the true saviour. Right. Okay. Oh, oh, fucking hell. I'm joking. Everybody knows that Muhammad is the true saviour. Oh. Oh. I don't mean the prophet Muhammad. I mean Muhammad who sells me my bread down from the market. <laughs> yeah, there's a guy that works down the road from me. He's yeah. just got this you know, Muhammad corner. and Ahmed, the banana men. They're coming down the stairs in pyjamas. <laughs> Jesus, that song is quite out there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Oof. It, it, I mean, that song does have a line that says the bananas in pyjamas are coming everywhere. <laughs> Doesn't I, it? I, I haven't heard that song, right, in, I'd say, 20 odd years. And I'm sure it has set, yeah, says something like that. I have to, I'll have to check it out after this. When little Eric eats a banana, he gets quite cummy. <laughs> when little Eric eats a banana, he's earned his money. He's earned his money. <laughs> when, oh, yeah, no, no, never mind. <laughs> so is there any way we can do the uh, Jesse Jesus thing with the time traveling element, you know, with the camel? Well, maybe it's maybe it's not time uh, maybe it's not time travel. Maybe it's just cross dimensional, and all the <laughs> events in the Bible only happened in like each universe's respective Bible. So, like, there was one Bible that where there was a flood, but then everything was cool. It was fine, there yeah. Was one, yeah, there was one. There's one Bible where Adam and Eve are still in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's and also like, a Bible where like Jesus has that loaf of bread and a fish, and he eats it. And everything was cool after that. <laughs> he, he, he makes himself a nice fish sandwich. <laughs> 500 people look on in complete dismay <laughs> as they beg for sustenance for their children as they watch them slowly rot. Jesus looks on with not so much disgust, but complete indifference. Yeah, there's that universe where Jesus stands in front of a huge crowd of people and says, I'll make these this small portion of... Fish and bread last you all. And then some Roman centurion comes on, like just pushes him off stage and says, don't worry, the Roman army's here. We're going to sort you out. <laughs> and they, they bring in relief and then the Roman army, you know, sorts everything out and everything's fine. Yeah, the Bible where Jesus is the informant and completely sells out his people. The other version of the Bible where Jesus is the governor of Judea. <laughs> the other Bible where Jesus is completely in tune with his divinity and, they, and looks on... Looks on the human race as a as a considerably lower life form and has complete disdain for them. Uh, the, yeah, the other Bible where Jesus was kind of like just starting out doing these miracles, and then he had a heart attack and died, and Pontius Pilate had nothing to do with it. <laughs> the other Bible, oh, <laughs> the other Bible where the prophe- prophecies were a little bit too specific, and uh, <laughs> who would have been yeah, like, who, would... who would be tracking down baby Jesus at that kind of time? Who was? Who you mean Herod? Yeah, Herod. Herod's men find the baby in the crib and just put an ice pick straight through the baby's face. <laughs> and there's no Jesus. <laughs> well, wait, that's where, you know, there's a massive flash and out of nowhere a time-travelling camel appears. And this is where Rufus, i.e. Moses, and teenage <laughs> Jesus in massive fucking Ray-Ban shades fight them off. Oh, yes. Yes, oh, you know? yes, yes. And then uh, baby Jesus, baby Jesus, and then baby Jesus says, so you're me? What am I thinking? And then Rufus is like, 69, dudes! Vicar of Dibley joke, uh, Jesus, or uh, alternative Bible where Herod says, kiss all the babies. (laughs) It's actually a lot more dark. It's a very (laughs) heavy kiss. Or or alternate Bible where... uh, Eve eats the forbidden fruit and God comes out and he says, I told you not to do that. Bloody hell. Don't and do that back. again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or, or it turns out that the uh, the snake was just being helpful and saying, like, this fruit's really nice. And it was just a snake called Stan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's loads of fruit in, in, in the Garden of Eden and they're all rich in nutrients. Like the serpent approaches them. They're all like incredibly malnourished. And he's actually, he's looking out for their well-being. I read somewhere that um, that some religious thinkers believe the forbidden fruit was a banana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can kind of when see li- that. When little Eve eats a banana, she dooms the human race. Yeah, look, there's the alternate Bible where the serpent is tempting her to put it, you know, in a snatch. Oh dear, I think we should move on. You see, I think that there there could be money in a Bible film because you've got the Passion of the Christ, which has a very um, 
ardent following. Uh, you know, I, I think I think The Passion of the Christ is a, is quite a good film, uh, but there are people who who like it just because it is, you, you know, so religious. Mm-hmm. Uh, have I, you ever seen? You're gone. No, I still haven't seen The Passion of the Christ at all. Um, I think I've avoided it for those reasons. I've never, I've never given it a fair right. shake. Yeah, I mean, I I think Mel Gibson is a pretty good director, really. I, I like Apocalypto as well. And The Man With No Face, did he direct that? I think he did. The Man Without a Face, not The Man With No Face, The Man Without a Face is Mel Gibson's directorial debut, and I thought it was pretty good. It's about a man who is disfigured, as you might guess. And the man is Mel Gibson, so he's directing himself. Who'd have thought it? Oh, my God. Goodness gracious. Um, but I think there's, I think that uh, aside from the Passion of the Christ, there is money in in Christian films. I mean, have you heard of God Isn't Dead? No, I never heard of it. What's that? So it's God's Not Dead, not God Isn't Dead, and it it stars Kevin Sorbo, who's the guy who played Hercules when Hercules was a TV show oh, on Channel right. Five. Oh, yeah, right. No, no I, I've, I've got you now. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Right, and Dean Cain from the New Adventures of Superman with oh. Terry Hatcher. Right, he's yes, in it I, as well. I remember that as well. It, it's and it's um, it's about this uh, this philosophy professor who's like an, a a um, a very vocal atheist, and he's challenged by by someone in his class to prove that God doesn't exist, and he can't do it. And he really does believe in God. He just hates God for these personal reasons. And it's it's just it's a film that builds up all these kind of atheist straw men. And it's 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 pretty bad, but it made a lot of money, and it got a lot of notoriety for kind of being, uh, being kind of laughable in many ways. Have you, uh, have you seen an- it? I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. And and there's another one as well, which I think I've seen. It, I think it's just called God's Not Dead Two. <laughs> <laughs> right. The yeah. recur- return of God, who didn't need to return anyway. <laughs> who, he didn't die, guys. <laughs> he didn't like, even go. He didn't even go. He's always with you. Uh, he's yeah. Uh, he's like God is a surveillance state, essentially. <laughs> uh, so there's another one as well called Left Behind, uh, which is about uh, what would happen uh, if Christians, if true Christians were raptured. So I think it's based on a book, but the film is about um, a guy who's a pilot and he's piloting a plane whilst the rapture happens. And who is the pilot? It's Nicolas Cage, isn't it? It's Nicolas Cage, and oh. it's awful. It's such a terrible movie. What, what and it even for it Nicolas like Cage... Knowing or something, or am I thinking of a different movie? I think that, well, that is a different movie. It's called Left Behind, Oh right, this okay. movie. It, it, it's terrible. Even for Nicolas Cage, it is terrible. Oh, that, well, that is, that's quite a benchmark. Right. I didn't know yeah. it was about the fucking rapture. But but you know films like that do make a lot of money and and I'm I don't know if that did hang on it made quite a bit of money it made twenty thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars it made twenty million dollars so it it didn't make a lot of money it barely made its budget back but it it did but I think overall it probably lost money but I think there is money in Christian films um, I think if you did a Bible the movie and you did it kind of seriously oh yeah without a shadow of a doubt but I I'm, I'm not quite happy with it i think i feel like you're kind of disparaging our time traveling camel movie to me that's more attractive than that noah movie i'm sure i am fucking sure that russell crowe gerard butler and hugh jackman are all the same person <laughs> so both you know they had the baby split into three part, three separate parts of the personality and they've grown respectively i mean, i think hugh jackman's a lovely person well, he's the niceness, you know, in the personality, but we have to fuse him back together with Russell Crowe and Gerard Butler so they're one balanced human being again. It's why Russell Crowe is so so aggressive. He is lives it? without his compassion. <laughs> his compassion well, he, being Hugh Jackman. He just needs a tugboat to tell him what to do. <laughs> so you've got Noah. Do you think we could make Pontius? Portraying him in a light in which to be condemned, or are we trying to, like, well, humanise him? It's the story about Pontius Pilate, and he's he's the governor of this place, which is kind of a bit disorderly. You've got a lot, a lot of superstitious people there, a lot of people who kind of still believe in black magic and stuff. It's a bit backwards. Right, okay. And he doesn't, you know, maybe he doesn't really want to be there. He's a sophisticated Roman, but he's kind of competent, you know, that's why he's been sent there. It's not a punishment or anything. It's, it's his position is... He's just is, the man for the job, basically. He, he, you know, I don't, don't want to say it, but he's... Uh, He's the Tony Blair of his day. He could have sorted out the Middle East, but instead he started a war. <laughs> he thought, fuck it. He thought, fuck, fuck it. Yeah, I'll have um, these fucking slags. 
That's my that's Tony exactly Blair, by Tony the way. Tony Blair. <laughs> Do you remember when we saw Tony Blair and everyone booed him? Yeah, yeah. What was that? Was uh, Thatcher's that, funeral? Wasn't Thatcher's it? funeral. That, Thatcher's wedding. Do you not remember we went to Thatcher's <laughs> wedding back in 1961? <laughs> uh, so, so I think it should be Pontius Pilate, and it's it's kind of you know, it's his story as a governor, and Jesus is only a little bit of that. Like Jesus isn't really a big thing for him. Yeah, he, uh, was, you know. <laughs> what? Yeah. No, go on. That's fine. Fine. No, Jesus isn't, isn't really a, bi- a big thing for him. What is a big thing for him is the landings, uh, the the landings at Megiddo by aliens that he has to cover up, and he <laughs> uh, and he helps cover them up, and he sets up this thing called MJ Twelve, and you know it's all about the beginning of um, of Area Fifty One, right? Okay, which so- which isn't in America. In fact, it's it's in it's in like modern modern day Lebanon or something. <laughs> And that's obviously a reason for conflict in the modern day, because people still dispute that you know there's no reason Area 51 should be in Roswell, New Mexico. Pe- pe- people just... think that people think that that all the stuff in the Middle East they think it's the Jews versus the Shias versus the Sunnis versus the Christians. It's all about alien technology. <laughs> technology. So yeah, so like the real conspiracy with Roswell, New Mexico, is that it's not actually there at all. It's just a bait and switch. Yeah, if you if you actually go to Roswell, it's Roswell. Roswell. If, if, if yeah, if you actually go to Rosdoyle, you'll find that it's just a very very nice lake. <laughs> so I think that Jesus factors into the Pontius Pilate story as kind of like a bit of a side plot. Really, I think the the bulk of the story is about him trying to hollow out a volcano for his secret base. That's taken quite a leap. He's travelled quite far. So I imagine this volcano, he's the, he will have travelled to like French Polynesia. He's on like a remote Pacific island now, right? Oh, I, I thought you meant he'd buried through the centre of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's simply come out the other end. He's the son of God, of course. You know, he can stand the molten temperatures. So we're saying that Pontius Pilate is the son of God. Oh, no. I thought, I'm, sorry, I was saying Jesus. You, you were saying Pilate is carving out his new base in a volcano. Yeah. Right. Jesus okay. is only a little... Jesus is only a bit of a... Jesus is like a street magician who gets a bit of a rep. Well, how, well what, what if Jesus was that which landed in uh, Roswell, Palestine? Right? He's actually the little green man. Pilate right, is now right. like carving out his base with the technology that he has um, akin... So you got all these all these soldiers with like plasma guns. <laughs> <laughs> all the, like Careful, this is still, about to become Fallout, isn't it? They're, they're still in like chest plates and everything. They're still <laughs> dressed as Romans, but they've got plasma guns. I'm I'm just thinking about how to work Judas into this story now. Maybe Judas was like an artificial intelligence that lived on the ship. Judas could tell that if Jesus was allowed to live, like Jesus was well intentioned, but he would cause a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. All Judas did was present a massive was prevent a massive race war. <laughs> Judas was an artificial intelligence, and Peter was a lizard, <laughs> and the other guy was made out of cake. The other guy, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the other guy, yeah. Yeah, there was only four of them, no? Or am I wrong? <laughs> you know, you know, you know, Jesus and the three apostles. <laughs> I like to think that Jesus uh, was a time traveler, but he only used that time travel ability because he knew that there was a point in history where people didn't have enough fish or bread and he was like i'm going to prove that i'm the messiah by taking loads of fish and bread to them (laughs) you know he could have brought a game boy back or something and people would have been like oh my god but no (laughs) and worship the game boy for the next two thousand years well yeah i mean that's why when you go to the middle east everyone has a mustache (laughs) <laughs> everyone, ha- everyone has a hat it's mario <laughs> yeah they don't worship the game boys of god it's like it's it is a religious it, text for lack of a better word just an interactive text do you just have ambitions would, to become super mario right i i like moving off the super mario mario shit i i think that a modern film should present jesus as like a a kind of bristly, unshaven, balding Arab dude selling white Mercedes Benz in Tel Aviv. I will not give any reasons as to why. That's just how I think. Because it'd be, be fucking done. awesome. That's why. <laughs> and and Judas is is like trying to sell minis, and he's jealous. <laughs> and he's just fucking crushed. The reality is, is that um, the apostles lived in Jesus' mouth as teeth. What if everything we just said existed as teeth? 
And every time the character opened its mouth, you heard the undying screams of everything we just talked about. <laughs> what about okay? What about? Right, I like. I quite the, like the, you know, the the twelve apostles as Jesus' teeth because not only is it disgusting that there'd be tiny people in his mouth, but Jesus would only have twelve teeth, which in itself would be fucking disgusting. Oh, most people only have twelve teeth. The rest <laughs> is just a myth. Well, I think. What about if uh, there were twelve apostles in Jesus' mouth, but then Jesus was just one of many, many messiahs in God's mouth. And then God was just Pinocchio's nose. Oh. Okay, the Bible, in the Bible, 90-minute movie. Ray Liotta is God. Rufus is the... Uh, Rufus, fucking All right, George Carl. I kind of wanted to just ask one thing. Now, when we say Ray Liotta, right? Yes, it's Ray Liotta from B-Movie. No, uh, what I was going to say, so, like, is this live action? Because if not, do we actually get Ray Liotta in? Because that would be expensive. Can we not just download all the sound bites from was it gta 4 what it whatever it was <laughs> and vice use city, that yeah. vice city sorry and then we just use that to kind of comp all his lines lord assholes prick asshole prick dick moron prick you inbred idiot stupid prick you prick i can't remember what you were using it for but i was flabbergasted that that was just that was just that much i still like to believe that that was all in a single take as well he's just I, he's yeah. just well well versed in just shouting abuse for that long. He kicked the studio door in, went up to the microphone, yeah, didn't he ask wasn't if they were recording, hired, and just you know? began. Yeah. They he heard that they wanted Joe Pesci to do it, and he was like, fuck that. Joe Pesci is tiny. I am a god. <laughs> I am God. I am the Ray Liotta. I don't know, I, I always get the sense that um God is a bit of a dork. <laughs> Do you think that um do you think we could get Woody Allen to do it? I was gonna say Crispin Glover from Back to the Future. Who's he? He plays um The Dad. The dad, yeah. Okay, Crispin Glover from Back to the Future. Or the guy who played Commander Data. Oh, actually that would be pretty good. That would be pretty good, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then he there's room then, for a Star then Trek after that, crossover as well. Right, yeah, Commander Data is God. And then I think there should have been I th- I don't think they should have done Deep Space Nine. I think it should have just been Commander Data, the teenage years. Yeah. As he's like forming universes in his mind, sitting. Well, on. What about what about if Q is God? I right, listen. Okay, let's just cut to the chase. We 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 both know what what, what I'm thinking. Mister Monk is God. <laughs> oh, damn! I was thought you were going to say Frasier. Oh no, fucking hell! God, uh, Frasier's Satan. Right. Okay. No, no, no. Well, I suppose so because Fra- like Satan was the one that burnt down Mister Monk God's fucking newspaper stand, right? Wow. And and Mister God forgave him <laughs> but not entirely he was still a f- he, like Fraser is still a fallen angel and we call it Final Fantasy Spirits Within <laughs> oh Perfect. dear we've got it we've solved yeah. it well, I think we should like maybe like make a hotline for this episode and see just how many people we can get to complain <laughs> we should set up an email or something I think so you want to do that <laughs> I don't know. Do you? Want, I don't want to fucking man it. Do you want to man it? No, I don't want to man it. But I could. There's. I have like this morbid curiosity just to see what would come in, because I would like to see like some death threats, and I'm sure they're going to be there. If you have any hate comments, send them to my PO box. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share with your friends, and see you next time where we will be discussing Indiana Jones Four and how to make it better or different. Yeah, a slightly less volatile topic for some. I think more fridges. Okay. Well, yeah, the, like the whole movie is going to be fridges. More fridges and more monkeys. That's simple. Yep. Oh, and, I think... and and Indiana Jones should have been thirty years younger. That's it. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, so next week we're going to do something else now, um, <laughs> yeah. or no, just try and get just... like sixty minutes of content out of that alone. It's going it's to be just... a painful listen as per usual. But thank you for mo- soldiering through it, people. Next next week is just going to be exactly what I said. It's it's not going to be me re- saying it again. It's going to be the same audio clip. It's, <laughs> it's like 15 seconds long. <laughs> fridges, monkeys, fridges, monkeys, fridges, monkeys. Monkey! He's a cheeky monkey! What a cheeky monkey! Wombat gorilla, birthday cake, moves. <laughs> Robot, Jesus, dinosaur, banana. I am talking Australian and I've made a diorama. Oh, wombat, <laughs> right. wombat, wombat. You slack. <laughs> 
<laughs> dingo, 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 dingo. <laughs> babies, babies, babies. That dingo ate your baby. What? Dingo ate your baby. <laughs> Steven Seagull. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm, I'm stopping this. Dogs and cats and 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 dogs and cats